Hello and welcome. My name is Travis Miner, and I am here with Nancy Steenson of Steenson College Coaching to talk about some of the best advice that Nancy's learned from her many years of experience about how students can make the most of their college tours. Nancy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me, Travis. To start off with, I think we've all heard and going through the college process that you should tour different colleges. Um, but could you help us to understand why is it really important that students engage in this process? Well, if you look on college websites, they're wonderful. They get better all the time. But after a while, colleges start looking all the same. They have pretty campuses. They have similar majors. They, ha they all have study abroad. And so it's really hard for students to differentiate these colleges without actually seeing them in person. When a student and parents go on college campuses, they really pick up on the vibe on that campus. And they really, really are different. Um, some colleges are very eclectic and draw all kinds of students, but some are not. And it's important for students to sort of feel like they can find their people when they get somewhere. So colleges help them to do that. Furthermore, a 16 or 17 year old doesn't always know what they want until they see it. So a student might say, I really wanna be in a city. And then they get to a college campus in a city and they go, this is actually not what I had in mind. There's no campus, there's no green space. Or they might say, I really, really want a big school because they go to a small high school. And then they get to Michigan State and they go, well, maybe not this big. I didn't know I'd have to take a city bus to get from my dorm to a class. So visiting in person really puts things into perspective for a student. When I work with students, I might give them a short list of colleges to start visiting. And when they come back and give me feedback, everything becomes much more crystal clear for both of us. Okay, you love this one. Now I have an idea of some other colleges you might like. But if you hated Michigan State, and Michigan State's a great school, by the way, but if you hated it and you can tell me it's only because I didn't, I didn't want something that big after all, then that automatically knocks a lot of other colleges off the list. You don't have to visit 10 other huge state universities. You know that's not your thing. That's super helpful. I, I wish I'd had some of that advice when I was go, going through the process. I'm wondering... When once folks have decided, yes, we're going to tour some schools and, and we understand the importance of this, what are some tips you might have for how they can make the most of their tours? <clears throat> well, first of all, it's really important to register for the tour and the visit. Um, some people forget that. So you go on the college website and you click on visit and you sign up for an information session and or tour, whatever they're offering. If you don't do that, then they don't know you were there. And if they don't know you were there, it doesn't really count toward what we call demonstrated interest or the college knowing that you really are interested in attending. Um, also, you just don't get all the bells and whistles. So it's important if you can to go ahead and register for the tour and information session. Then when you arrive at campus, you'll get a little slideshow presentation by admissions, and you will also get a tour by a student, and you will have checked the box with the college that you were actually on site. So it is important to do that. Another few things that I recommend to students is um, even though we all know that fine dining at a lovely restaurant downtown probably offers a better meal than a dining hall on campus, I really encourage families to eat one meal in the dining hall or the student center for numerous reasons. Number one, you may as well see what the food is like, the quality, the choices, et cetera. But secondly, you really pick up on the student vibe in a student center or a dining hall. Look around you, see if students are intermingling with each other, if they, they are having fun, if they seem stressed out, if um, people are just walking around like, you know, one, in, one at a time with their phone in front of them or in groups talking and laughing. I really see differences from campus to campus. And I think it's important for students to see that as well. It's also important to go other places on campus that are important to the student. So, <clears throat> The tour will involve different buildings on campus and every college tour is different, but there might be certain buildings that are important to a particular student. If the student, for instance, has strong faith and they drop by Hillel 
They would love to talk to you. Drop by the Catholic Center, go inside the chapel and see what that worship space is like. If the student is an athlete and the gym was not on the tour, go in the gym and look at the facilities. You know, what, what, what do they look like? Are they, are they great? Do they, do they need a renovation? Um, if the student is involved in theater, go over to that building, see if they have a black box theater, see what the, what the, the venues are um, for performances. There's no reason why you shouldn't do that. Don't walk away from a campus only having seen the canned tour because there's a lot more to see on campus. Um, in order to do all that, you might wanna think about visiting only one to two maximum colleges per day. Oftentimes families try to zip through two or three of them and the takeaway is Zippo. Kids will forget what they saw, confuse one college to the other. If you have the luxury of time, one college a day is wonderful. Two colleges a day, that's acceptable. Otherwise, you're just racing from here to there and it, you're not spending your time well. Um, I tell students that they need to take notes. They need to write down what they loved and what they didn't like because they will forget. Even if they only see one campus a day, it, it all blurs together. So it's important to take notes on that. Um, and the last thing I would say is if you have a little bit of time at the end of your day, just sit somewhere on the quad, sit on the grass, sit on a bench and watch the world go by. It's another way just to see, you know, what goes on. Are people coming out and tossing a football? Are they mostly studying? Are they talking to each other? Are they, again, just, you know, the same kinds of things you're going to observe in a dining hall, but it's just a different opportunity. I really appreciate how this advice encourages students to go beyond what the school is choosing to feature on a tour and really think about what's what's important to the student, what are their values, and um, being able to get a better sense of whether or not the school's aligned with those values and the experience they're looking for. And I bet this advice also really helps when students have to write that essay about why do you want to go to college X that you've you've got your notes there. So that's that is super helpful. Um, so you've given some great tips about sort of how do we go beyond the tour experience. When students are actually on the campus tour, are there certain questions you'd encourage them to ask or, or conversations to try to spark? Absolutely. So remember, the tour guide is a student, it's a current student, and that's who you're going to be in a year or two. Tap into their um, experience by asking some questions. Most tours use the same script. I go on 30, 40, 50 tours a year. So believe me, I know about the blue light system. I know that dorms come with two beds and two dressers, or dorm rooms come with two beds and two dressers and two desks. You hear the same thing on every tour with a little bit of difference. What you need to do is ask that student questions and they love questions. So for example, you might ask the student, what do you do on weekends? Or what do students do on weekends? You might ask them, have you had an internship? Have your friends had internships? What kinds of internships are they and how did they get them? Um, another question I love is, after you were here for a semester or a year, what surprised you most about this college? Um, another question I like to ask very open-ended is, what's your favorite thing about this college? And my last favorite question is, if this college received a $50 million gift from an alumnus, what do you think they should spend it on? And that's a backwards way of asking which building is in horrible shape, which program needs, needs uh, you know, uh, bolstering up, you know, what's the weakest part of this college? And you can't really ask it that way because they won't really necessarily give you a great answer. But if you ask them where you would put a huge gift, you usually get to find out what, what's suffering a little bit at that college. That is such a great question. And, and, and I know that so often tour guides are very well coached and they know how to how to answer some questions and maybe in ways that always paint the school in a favorable light. And I I appreciate how that gives an insight into maybe what are what are things that still need some work or where there's room for improvement. I ask it on every visit and I always get a remarkably honest answer because they don't always realize <laughs> what they're giving away. It's these these are such helpful tips. And it seems like in collectively we have 
components that are about how do we sort of administratively make the most of it from the registering for for the tour and making sure that that's sort of counted in the demonstrated interest and taking notes as we go, but also how do we peel back another layer and get a, a deeper sense of what would it actually be like to spend more than a day on this campus and think about our routines and how how this campus would look and feel as we go about our day-to-day -day lives as students. That's such, such valuable information. Um, Nancy, what, um, if families are interested in talking to you and learning more and, and enlisting your support and helping their students through this process, what's the best way for them to be in touch with you? Thank you, Travis. They're welcome to uh, check out my website, which is steensoncollegecoach.com, or they can certainly email me at nancysteenson at comcast.net. Terrific. Thank you so much for your time today, Nancy, and thank you for all of your guidance that you've shared. Thanks a lot. Pleasure to be here.